Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So just based off of the root, anybody have any, any idea what we're going to be talking about when I say digging up the root and going beyond? Or did you just see it and say, I'm going to just step in there because it's talking about digging up a root, and I like roots? <laughs> Issues, all right, problems, and trying to get a little further. So let's start off a little bit about myself, and this is going to be very brief because it's not about me, it's about the work. Um, for those who do not know me, my name is Frankie Pollard, Jr. I'm an assistant principal at Creekside High School. Just a little bit of my past, I was a former uh, band director and dean of students. Uh, some of my interests in photography, which you'll see throughout the presentation, I always like good images and good visuals. So, oh, yeah, that'll be, help, that'll be helpful. Uh, I love music. As you see, I was a former music educator, and I love education, and this is my 16th year in education. So uh, at Creekside, and I refer to Creekside a lot because this is where the work is occurring, and this is where I've actually did, uh, seen this work in progress and seen the results of the work. So I will res uh, re recite, well, excuse me, I will refer to Creekside a lot throughout this, okay? At Creekside, we uh, like to use our learning targets to be split into the what, the why, and the how. And not only do you write it, but we want to make it so not only the, the teacher understands that what's the what, the why, and the how, but also so the students understand what's the what, the why, and the how of their learning target. So today's learning target is administrators will learn how to identify an issue using root cause analysis and complete a problem solving process in order to utilize the procedure to focus on current or future school related problems by using relevant examples provided by the presenter. So this is going to be a presentation where it's not going to be just me talking and you just listening. All right, so I'm going to be asking some questions, and we're actually going to do some work. And for you all that are in a school or anywhere else, you'll actually be able to take this back and utilize it in whether it be your professional and sometimes personal life. And I so with that being said, I'm going to ask this question to the group. What is the function of a root? What is the function of a root? Yes, yes. Any other? All right, good. Nutrients. All right. So what we got from Merriam and Webster Dictionary is a root is something that is an origin or a source uh, or is a condition of quality. So next is I want to give you an example, and then I'm asked this question. I'll give you an example first. In my yard, I have weeds. The real, the kind of weeds that you don't want, not the kind that some of you do want. Now, but we have weeds. What, now, with that being said, what would be the effect of the root if I wanted to go get rid of my weeds, but I didn't pull up the root? What is the, so back to the question, what is the effect of a root not being fully removed? What happens? It's going to come back. All right? So a lot of, when I was young, I found out the hard way when they say go out there and, you know, get rid of the weeds, or I go out and just pull them up. Look, Dad, I got all the weeds, and then they go back up. They're coming right back. So basically, the problem remains, and the issue will resurface. So we're utilizing today uh, a procedural process called the five whys. How many have ever heard or utilized five whys? All right, good. So the beginning part of this, this process was going to utilize the five whys, which is why it's saying find the root cause and going beyond. So after we get the five whys and we get to that solution, then we're going to be going beyond. But with that being said, we're still going to review that for everybody. So let's talk about our, our, our problem number one. Excuse me. In D.C., there was an increased amount of money spent on cleaning supplies at the Washington Monument. That's our problem. All right. So we looked at the problem. We, we, we spent a lot of money. Why? So we're going to now ask this question five times, and we're going to get down to what's the real cause. So why do we need, why are we spending more money on cleaning supplies? Because we need more cleaning solution than normal. All right, well, let's look a little further at that. Why do we need more cleaning solution than normal? There's an increase in pigeon droppings or whatever you want to call it, all right, on the steps or in the area. So why is it an increase in pigeon droppings? Well, pigeons are hanging attracting those spiders, or why are spiders coming around? Spiders like the gnats, all right? So now we're asking, why are gnats coming around? What, what's, what's making these gnats? What's attracting these gnats? Well, the gnats are attracted to fluorescent lights. So now we've asked why, 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 five why. So we should be at a solution or somewhat 
closer solution. So what are what is attracting the, the, the gnats, fluorescent lights? What can you do to fix that problem? Anybody? Change the lights. So, good. So we looked and said, if we change the monument lights from fluorescent to LED lights, that can change the problem. So it's cheaper for us to just change the lights than to go back and say, all right, let's find some more solution, and, you know, you're spinning your wheels, all right? Good. So we're going to move now to another one that's kind of similar. It goes into a school situation. All right? So student referrals are higher on Wednesdays. When looking at discipline data, you're like, why is it on Wednesdays? It's just, for some reason, it just spikes up. All right? So on Wednesday, we found that there were more incidents in the hallway. Then there's more students in the hallway during transition. So why is it more incidents in the hallway? Because there's more students in the hallway during transition. Well, why is that? Because students are not eating in the cafeteria on Wednesdays. So they're just hanging in the hallway. So now we say, well, why are they not eating in the cafeteria on that particular day? Well, on that day, students don't like Wednesday food selection. So why do they not like the food selection? This can be like question, whatever, and through student surveys, question, whatever. We say, why don't you like student, uh, why do you not eat in the cafeteria on Wednesdays? Because that's the day that the district mandated the healthy food menu option. And they don't want that, so they don't even go in the cafeteria. So there can be a lot of solutions to this. For today's purpose, the solution would be provide more menu options for Wednesday. All right, so if we go all the way back, if we change this, it changes everything, and it goes back to our problem, and then we clear that hallway out. We clear the uh, amount of incidents that are occurring. <laughs> so just, uh, just this is one of those things that, you know, I, I do get where sometimes I do have a problem. Now I always go through a process in my mind. I'm just that, that type of person. But I, like I told you, you can use this as a personal. You can see I can see a problem and then start kind of asking these, my, myself these questions. Why? Because naturally we'll go to the first why. All right? So with that being said, we're going to now go into an activity. Like I said, we're going to have a few activities. We're going to get you writing and, and moving around and doing some things. So for our first activity, I'm going I'm to get everybody a maze and something, a writing utensil. So if you don't have one, but do not start it until I say start. I have a helper or something here to help me pass out my papers. <laughs> so what's going to happen, this, the only direction is that when I tell you to start, I want you in three minutes to figure out how to get out of this maze. Oh, I'm sorry. How to get out of this maze. Only one direction. I mean, only instruction that I need to add to that. Oh, a pen. I'm sorry. You cannot pick your pen up off of the paper once you start. All right, so you can't go and then like, oh, no, that's not it. Let me go. No. Once you put your pen down, I want you to try to get all the way to the end. So we're going to begin in five. Oh, I'll get my clock out. Four. Three, two, one. Three minutes. Who got through it? Mm hmm As long as you kept your pen on the on the I did I also I just want to be transparent. I went the opposite way. Mm. Um, I like that. Uh, I That's a whole nother thought process. And then afterwards was like Ooh. Okay, so before I say it, can anybody just tell me why you think I use this maze to to prove bring home some type of point? I like that. When she said it, I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So we always talk about that backwards design. Good. That was good. So the ones who um, that actually kept their pen on the paper and went around, how many times did you run into a wall? Yeah. Quite a few times, right? You, you, now, what, what was making you have to make that hard to sit, that quick, rash decision to kind of get in there? What was it that was making me? The competition. What else? Time. All right. So I'm going to ask this last question. How many of you all actually went through and did not put your pen on the paper until you figured it out? All right. So the time. So if you had more time, do you think you would have took more time to plan it and say, look, before I even start, let me navigate this whole thing. All right? Good. So that was the 
for, uh, the basic point of that is when we're looking into uh, going into a problem, what we do, we find ourselves sometimes rushing into an answer or a solution because of many factors. It could be time. It could be competition. But we just go right into it. All right, we don't have a process in order to get to the solution, so we just start. And a lot of times when we just start, we do what we do. We run into walls. We have to start over. Uh, we don't start at all. We just quit and say, forget it. We'll deal with it another time. And that doesn't make the problem go away because basically that's just taking out the top part but not digging down into the root. All right? So you can keep that activity for right now. We're going to continue to move. But that was just something to keep your mind thinking on where we're going right now. How many of y'all know that, that, that television show? We're going to talk a little about that. And how many know what that show is? What show is that? CSI Miami. CSI, CSI Miami. Who's this guy? Oh, yeah. If you know anything about that show, who's that? Oh, Horatio. Horatio, the coolest investigator with shades on that walks around and talks real low. And I don't understand it, but it's cool. <laughs> One thing about CSI Miami, what happens almost 99.9% .9 of the time at the beginning? of the show, what happens to a person? They die. They die. All right, 99.9, .9, I've never seen a show where it didn't happen. So I'm going to say 100% of the time the show starts off with someone dying. But the directors do a good job of leading you as the viewer to believe that you know who was the murderer at the beginning of the show because that person was who they were arguing with. So that, like, let's say, let's set that up. They're arguing, a man and a woman is arguing. He says, forget you, I hate you, I can't stand you. She goes away, and all of a sudden she gets hit in the head, and then she's dead, and then Horatio shows up, and the first person you're thinking has to be that angry boyfriend or angry friend. Fifteen minutes later into a 30-minute show, they start introducing new clues, new people, and then you see the person who you thought it was is actually not the killer. That person actually went away and went home. It was actually somebody new introduced into the story. So basically, we have a problem, but we automatically had a solution without going through the same process that Horatio and his team normally goes through. Because if that was the case, they would just arrest a person and show it be over in five minutes. But that never happens. So with that being said, this is how it looks. We have a problem, we jump to the solution, but then we end up confused, running into walls, quitting, whatever it may be. We have to change that mindset. It's not problem, it's something holds here and then the solution. That is the process. And that's what we're talking about. We have a problem, we have to have a process, then we get to the solution. So now we're going to go to our second activity, which is going to allow us to now practice uh, the five whys, and then it's going to set us up for what we're going to be doing for the rest of the particular uh, pre presentation. So in front of you, you have a purple sheet that I just passed out in this two-sided sheet. On one side, it actually says uh, the root five root cause scenarios, and on the back it actually says practice. So what I'm going to do, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, five. For, yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm going to allow you or a partner. Everybody should have a partner, someone close to a partner. Perfect. With a partner, I want you to choose one of the five scenarios. And on the back, I want you to go through and create a five whys to why that pro or how to get to the solution of that problem. So it's up to you. Everyone is going to have a different because you may take it in different ways. And I want to give you an opportunity to, to kind of practice on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three minutes. If, no, if we need more longer, I'll let you. But let's start with three minutes to look at that solution, I mean, excuse me, that problem. And then we're going to go through the five why protocol. All right? And you can begin now because that, that actually – would be the next why because as a teacher why don't I know because someone may not have I, I may not be exposed to it I never, you know so now alright so we're going to bring it back together and, and we had some good conversation um, that we're going to talk about did, any, did anyone get sort of stuck or kind of you know 
kind of go off, get off track a little when you begin your wives? Was it a little more difficult than just going straight down? All right. Now, this is something that cannot just be done in five minutes. This is a, we've done this in our leadership team. It took us a while, you know, and, and, and this is not like, this is just a sample, five minutes. But this is really how you can really get down to a solution to start looking at yourself. So, Mr. Sykes, you actually, I heard you say about the five wise, you were saying, um, what did you state, the statement you made about us? Yeah. Can you state that again? So I said, um, basically, when you get to um, your, close to your root cause and you point at yourself as a, as a possible problem, as a possible root cause. Um, in this case, we looked at um, student data decreasing in seventh grade math. We went through the teachers don't know how to pass the standards, how to pass the standards. We weren't given ample time to teach the standards, blah, blah, blah. We ultimately didn't set up enough time to train the teachers. So you, the yeah. So that was a conversation because what happens is sometimes we'll go into this and then we'll start changing it from us to them. And then that's not, because we can't control them. We can only control us. So let me get another one before I go. Any, anyone else chose seventh grade math or had a different path on that or another one? So when you say we, meaning? As, uh, as the, if I'm the admin, okay. Team, okay. So okay. 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 Right on. Because you, after you went through your wise, it came back to maybe we're not evaluating, maybe we're not monitoring, maybe we're not providing professional development, and then you can still go on why. All right. Good. Anyone did anyone different than seventh grade math? All right, well, good. That's still good enough. So I think everybody understands the concept that the main point is you want to make sure as you're going through this protocol that you end up at the, especially for us administrators, you have to start looking at what we're doing or what we're not doing. All right? So we had a conversation where um, we were looking at teachers not having the instructional strategy. I'm going to just say where we were going. And let's talk about where we were going and then where we changed it. What did we originally have? Teachers. Uh, used to doing things their own way. Yeah. So once we got to that point, we said teachers were used to kind of doing things their own way, and then we had to kind of stop and say, all right, well, why? Like, what, what is it that they're missing? So now it's on us as administrators to say, well, if you're used to doing things your own way and it's not the right way, it's on back on us now to kind of to shape you or get you in the right direction. And that's, that's going to be um, utilized as we go further. So with that being said, now we've, we've gotten to the root. We've gotten to the root. Our root cause is professional development. We need to do more evaluations. We need to monitor better. So now we have that. What are we going to do now? We identified it. We know that information. And for a lot of uh, schools, or, or we get to that point, and that's when we stop. All right? We, we make a plan, and we say, all right, this was wrong. All right? And then the problem never changes because that's, all, that's where it stops. We have leadership teams that have two- and three-hour meetings we get to this point, and then it's never put into the classroom. It's never put into practice. It's never put into a PLC. Or if it's discussing the PLC, it never goes back into the classroom. All right? So now we're going beyond the root. So I look at this as six steps to success once we get beyond the root. Step one is identifying the root cause, which you all just did. Step two, we're going to ask the question, once we identify the root cause, how would this look once it's fully operational? What would this look like when it's done correctly? Step three, we're going to develop a team to address this issue. Who are the most qualified individuals in the building at this particular time to address this issue? 
So if it's a discipline issue, who's going to be the best person to deal with discipline? If it's an academic issue, who's the best people to deal with academics, all right? Step four, tasks. Now we have to start developing the tasks that have to be completed in order for us to get back to addressing the root. Five, a timeline. Just like any smart goal or any goal, when should this be done? When should this be completed? Or when is our, our target date? And, f and six, evidence. Once you say, all right, we've, we've reached a goal, we've made it, we're operational, what artifacts can you provide? What documentation can you provide to show that this is actually um, complete? So with that being said, I'm going to now go through a problem that we've, we've recently uh, went across, and I'm just going to give you an example. So everything's going to say example. And then once we get through our example of what we utilize in order to get to the root cause and go beyond for our problem on this, then I'm going to give you an opportunity to revisit what you just did with your, your five whys in order to complete that protocol, all right? So right now, our problem is classroom instruction does not align to performance data, all right? When you go in a classroom, the teachers are teaching, but it's not aligned to the data, basically. So first thing is we're going to go through our five whys. So why is because they're using the assessments wrong inconsistently. Why? Because the teachers are not properly evaluating the assessment data. Why are they not are properly assessing the data or, or using it? Because they don't understand what information to use when looking at the data. Why? Because the PD did not provide training or didn't train the staff on techniques to look at data properly. And I can stop there. Sometimes we say, go in and look at data, 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 data. But how many people in your building have actually been trained on how to look at data? Is it just numbers and bars, and they're supposed to come in and just know that? All right. So why? Time is not scheduled by administration to allow professional vet development on data usage. Because maybe that's not our focus right now. Maybe you're a first year principal and your goal is to keep the building on, from setting on, being set on fire. All right, maybe that's your goal right now. So you will find out, all right, I don't have time for that right now. But we'll get to it, but that's not where we are right now. So that's our five whys. So then the next question is, how would this look when it's fully operational? What would this look like when teachers are utilizing the data to inform instruction in their classroom? So, like I said, this is an example of what we've done at our school. So there's going to be a real big piece of literature that's going to come up here. Don't get thrown over how much words up here, all right? But this is what we decided. This issue will be fully met when teacher collaborative teams have successfully implemented a systematic process to assess students using standard-based common assessments that meet the rigor of Georgia standard of excellence. Collaborative teams would deconstruct standard, follow the created common assessment calendars to create some of the assessments and lesson plans with embedded formative assessments. Teachers will use data gathered from assessments for classroom guidance to a groups and inform instruction. Because that's a whole lot. All right? But as I said, this is not like a five minute thing. All right? So the next question is, who are the most qualified individuals to address this issue? Who do you think? Who do you think in the building would be some of the most qualified people to address the issue of teachers not utilizing data to inform their instruction? Instructional coaches, DSS, administrators. administrators. I think teachers because they're closest to the problem. Good. Teacher. So principal or administration, assistant principal. So I just put that on the administration. Instructional coach, district specialist. So you may need someone to come in to teach how to teach data or how to read data. All right. Um, and lead teacher or teachers. They have to be involved in this process as well. So then we're going to have to now develop a task to focus on addressing the issue. All right, what are the tasks that have to now come in order to get back to that? So create an updated common assessment calendar. Provide plan and data to create common assessments in order to unify collaborative teams. Boom, boom, it's a lot of stuff. All right, I don't want to read all this stuff. All right, but these are the tasks. You can see them for yourself. What is the expected timeline? So if you look back, I just wanted to highlight one and two so you'll understand what this is. So let's say task one. We may say, all right, the target date is 11-27-2017. That's when we, we want to have this done. All right, we don't want to. So what do we need to do? We need to have our task knocked out so we can get it by that time. But then you also have a completion date because what happens if you f finish early? 
you want to document that, all right? So we documented that. We finished this on November 17th, 2017. Task two, same thing, completion date, target date. We want to say we should have this done by December the 5th. But, hey, we finished that right on, day, on time. We documented it. So when some, so somebody asks you, did you complete it? Yeah, I completed it. Did you complete it on time? Actually, we completed that one early, all right? And then finally, your evidence of effectiveness. What evidence, or such as artifacts or documentation, can we provide to show evidence of completion? So I'm going to ask you that question. What evidence do you believe we can provide, artifacts that we can provide to say this is now in place at our school? Good. What do teachers normally turn in every week, every two weeks? Lesson plans. Lesson plans. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. So PLC documents, agendas, notes, as you stated, like you read it already. A PD calendar, data-driven lesson plans. Uh, a comprehensive school data wall, all right? If we have a, a data wall in your school, there it goes. We see growth, all right? That points back to a change in the classroom. Um, department data display and uh, increased student achievement on school and district assessments. So now we move into what you all are going to do now, all right? So I just gave you all a pink sheet of paper when I came around earlier. So we're going to go back into those groups that you all were working with. And now we're going to do the same protocol with, with your 5Y, that solution that you, you came up with for whatever you chose. Some of you all chose seventh grade math. Some of you might have chose students mail coming back. I've actually seen a, a various amount of things that you all can choose. So what we're going to do is you're going to go back to that paper. So you'll pull out your paper that you wrote on. You utilize the pink sheet in front of you. And then we're going to go through the protocol with your partner in order to get all the way down to the bottom. All right? Any questions on what we're doing? All right, I'm going to put five minutes on the clock, and then I'm going to walk around, and at the end we'll discuss that. All right, so let's bring that back to a close. So we're going to kind of wrap everything up. How many of us were actually able to get through the process? All right, good, good. So let's be realistic. Being realistic, this wouldn't be, once again, something you can do in this amount of time because it's not what? Hocus focus. It's not hocus focus. <laughs> you can't just snap your fingers and all of a sudden it works. Because we even said, even going back to the five wise protocol, that is something that takes time to get through because you really, it could be a dialogue that could be an intense dialogue. You might be going back and forth fussing and then it might step on some toes. Especially administrators. It will step on our toes because it kind of highlights what we may not be doing, you know. So with that being said, um, we're just going to do some sharing out just to kind of hear how we got through this process. Um, is anyone that volunteers first before I look into some people that want to share out their process starting from the beginning? Exactly. So we went back and we said, okay, well, if there's an increase in student mail, perhaps the primary method that we're, the primary method of the schools, with how the schools try to contact their parents is, is off. And so then we said, why is that off? Is it because it's common practice and tradition? Why is that? It's because the school hasn't investigated other avenues of communication. Um, why haven't they done that? The task has not been delegated. And then we didn't have a specific why. But we did come up with the school needs to have multiple avenues for parents to receive. So then we said um, the problem in the school's operational parents will have multiple options for receiving pertinent information. And who are the people most qualified to address this issue? Possibly the informational technology department or maybe district administrators, kind of looking at something for all of the schools and not just one. And then um, our tasks were set up common post schedule for the school, request email addresses, and perhaps set up a pair of online system where all important information can be accessed. So I do like that you revisited your whys because 
as we see, it's not, it's almost more of the process. You know, we have to now revisit our process. That kind of opens that mindset up. So good. I, I, I like that you said that because that is exactly where we've normally kind of took that, that conversation back to things that we can't control versus looking at what if it's our process? Maybe we get in return mail all the time because of what we're not putting in place in order to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, anyone else? What a different scenario. What was your problem again? The problem was the seventh grade math school. Okay. So we said that we wanted to collaboratively redesign and differentiate it to meet within our learning walks to assess, um, establish a set of deliverables, provide feedback, and identify some exemplary practices. Um, pretty, we were pretty proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> terms of, you know, just being able to think through some things that we could possibly implement. So that's when it's operational. That's what yeah. will be occurring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it's operational, we felt like, no, the teachers would be successful in doing the following. And they would see some proven results from the interim assessment. Uh, teachers are going deeper, collaborating, stronger lessons, stronger plan. Okay. So that's the solution. That's it. And then who would be involved in that? The coaches, teachers, admin, specialists, and department chairs. All right, so then their task would be? The task, again, were, um, oh, you mean specifically who was assigned to each student? Well, not really, but you, you said you, like, you, see, you identified a solution. You went from solution to what this would look like once it's done correctly. And these are the people that's going to be involved in it. So what are the tasks that that group would be responsible for completing to get to that? Okay, yeah, I gave them to you in a review. Yeah, yeah, okay. So again, they're going to collaboratively redesign um, a differentiated PD because the root cause, as we saw, it was the teacher's uh, professional development missed the mark. Mm -hmm. um, so organize learning walks to see how that PD is working. So again, safe practice or something along those lines. We establish a set of deliverables. So we're going to ask the teacher to give us how that sample works. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm lesson plan, some artifacts uh, that they have gotten this. And then uh, we'll ask them to give us feedback, and we'll provide feedback to them, and then we'll identify some exemplars. All right. And then, so th that already turns into artifacts, okay. what you just said, because you said you asked for lesson plans, and so it, you already now you already have your artifacts set and ready to go. Right. Good. All right, and then, of course, we put time on it. When should it right. be done in, in target right. date? All right, anyone else? Okay. So bringing this all together and in, into a close, like I stated at the beginning, um, it's really about the work. It's really about really digging deep and getting down and taking time. If you, what we found to be successful for us at Creekside, and I say real results of story at Creekside High School, is because we've made a lot of gains in the last few years. Um, and I think it's dedicated to how we've utilized our leadership team, building capacity with those leaders, being able to have our, not only our principal and assistant principals to be instructional leaders, but also our administrative assistants or dean of students, and then properly utilizing our instructional coaches and all the way down. So once we put these processes in place and we have people who now understand the goal and where we're trying to go and we put a, a protocol like this out, we will now have instructional conversation where we will not always agree, but we can get down to the five whys, to the solution. Then from that solution, we can now start to build our, what would this look like once it's done correctly? All right, what would this look like? Then adding who, who should be on this team? Who should be on this committee? Because everybody can't do everything. Like we said earlier, we, we may need the instructional coaches and teachers to be in this committee dealing with the seventh grade math. We may need the attendance clerk, social worker, um, who else? Uh, maybe a communities and schools, maybe RTI Dispro to be dealing with mail. Um, you know, so we, ha we have to kind of look at the different people, and then that's how you start to build your committees, and that's how you start to build capacity, because now those people own those things. So this is what we kind of use to go from non evident and into operational. And I'll say non-evident because when we started this process, we did a self-assessment. 
and we looked at where we were in some of the, the indicators that would allow us to kind of move forward as a school, and we were non-evident. We had nothing in process. We had no process in place for certain areas. But once we utilize this, and, and, and this is actually not hocus, hocus pocus, but it happened quickly. It happened quickly. We went from non-evident to operational by getting those people to think. So this goes back to your maze. We didn't just jump in and start trying to figure it out. We had to go and put some time into the front load of let's, let's put the right people in place. Who's on the leadership team? Who's leading what work? Who's in what committee? Uh, and then we started to work. So we did have to not run into walls like you did on the maze. So that's what the whole purpose of that maze was. So with that being said, um, that pretty much closes out the session for today. And my name is Frankie Pollock. If you need to reach me, this is my email. This is my work cell. And this is pretty much it. So all I ask you to do is work hard and stay humble. Thank you. All right. And I got to bring in the look.